So, students, in continuation with what we were discussing, let's discuss about anal fistula. Fistula in anal. <clears throat> what is a fistula? Fistula is a abnormal communication between two epithelial surfaces. Okay. So, abnormal communication between two epithelial surfaces is called fistula. Here, this abnormal communi communication is there. One inside the anal canal or rectum, another is on the skin. This is fistula in anal. So, what are the causes of fistula in anal? Etiology. As you know, as, as we discussed in the perianal sepsis, 90% of the anal fistula they arise from cryptoglandular uh, etiology. That is, the anal glands which I told you are present in the intersphinctric and the submucosal plane. They drain through the anal gland duct at the level of the dead line to the crypts of Morgagni. These ducts sometimes are obstructed by feces, debris or fibrosis anyway and the secretions pent up in the duct. These secretions then can burst out and get infected and these travel along the path of least resistance. Okay, so that can travel in the intersphinctric plane or cross the sphincter and come out or it can go above supralevator. Okay, so Park has given uh, classified the fistula in anna into four types. That is, one is intersphinctric. You see, that gland is there, and this is in between internal sphincter and external sphincter and comes out, got opening around the perianal area. This is intersphinctric, seen in about 20 to 40 percent of cases. Now, here you see the, the duct opens here, and this secretion passes through the internal as well as external sphincter and then outside opens outside this is trans sphincteric fistula now one what happens here the secretion goes up supra levator supra levator okay and then the, it comes down and open so this fistula is called this is the supra sphincteric fistula and this one is extra sphincteric here you see the duct is there, then the secretion can either go up or down. So it is this tract is outside the sphincters, extra sphincteric. This can also occur because of trauma, completely outside, extra sphincteric. So you have inter sphincteric, trans sphincteric, crossing both the sphincter, supra sphincteric, going above the supralevator, and you have extra sphincteric where the tract is completely outside the sphincter complex okay so these four types are there as i said mostly they arise because of the anal gland pathology which is called cryptoglandular other causes of fistula can be it can be because of chronic infections like tuberculosis inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis Crohn's. it can be because of malignancy it can be because of trauma from outside or it can be surgical trauma as we do in hemorrhoidectomy and episiotomy and surgeries like that. So these are the causes of fistula in animal. How the patient will present to you? They usually, when you take history, they can they will give you a history of perianal sepsis in the past, which was drained and subsequently has resulted in a small opening which discharged this pus off and off. Okay. Or you can have history of inflammatory bowel disease like chronic diarrhea, hematochesia, history of tuberculosis, you can have history of trauma or surgery on the perianal area which has led to the fistula. Okay, so how do you diagnose fistula? You have to put the patient in left lateral sims position, examine the perianal area, you will see that there is an opening there around the anal canal. Okay, so <coughs> then there will be a tract and there will be internal opening. Where will be the internal opening? For that, good cell law is there. And the good cell has devised a uh, law which says that if you divide an imaginary line transversely through the anal canal, this part is anterior, this is posterior. 
So if an external opening is there anterior to that imaginary transverse line across the anal canal, the internal opening will be radially opposite. See, if external opening is anterior to this line, the internal opening will be radially opposite. Whereas if external opening is posteriorly, it will open in the midline with a curved tract. With a curved tract. Okay. So if external opening is posteriorly, it will open in the midline with a curved tract. This is called Goodsell's law. The exception being, if it should have more than 3 cm anteriorly external opening, it usually opens posteriorly in a curved tract. Okay, so this is good sense. Right? So this this way you can guess where the internal opening will be. Okay, what are the investigations you do to, in such patients? In such patients, the investigation you can do do a DRE or proctoscopy and see if there is a, a hypertrophic papilla is there, which will or a sub abnormality is there at the level of dentate line inside, which will suggest that the internal opening is, could be there. Okay, or if there is any evidence of inflammatory uh, bowel disease and all. Usually in Crohn's disease and tuberculosis, there will be multiple external opening. Okay, there will be multiple external opening. And, you know, this is what we call complex fistula. A simple fistula has got a single opening and it's a low fistula, it can be easily operated upon. A complex fistula usually those where if you operate upon them, they can lead to incontinence. They usually have multiple external opening and they are secondary to Crohn's, tuberculosis, malignancy and things like that. Okay, so investigation wise, you can do a fistulogram where a dye is injected into external opening and, and tract is visualized. But it's not very useful investigation. Basically, the good investigation is MRI. MRI will tell you about the tract and its relation with the sphincter and you can delineate MRI is a good investigation for fistulite. Other investigation can be endoanal ultrasound where you introduce the probe inside anal canal and can visualize the uh, sphincter, visualize the sphincters and see the tract where it is going if there is any pus pocket and things like that. So how do you treat fistula? Basically, fistula treatment is surgical. After investigation, and you know, and as I told you, in all the cases you do general examination and all the general tests which you do, like CBC, LFT, and depending upon patient's age, your other tests you do for fitness for surgery and anesthesia. Here, usually in spinal anesthesia, we operate upon these patients. And if it is a low lying fistula, the operation we do is fistulotum where the whole tract is opened up and the, and the epithelium is curated out. You can send the epithelium for histology also. This is fistulotum. If it is trans sphincteric but involving less than 30% of the sphincter complex, you can still do uh, fistulotum. But if more than that is involved and it's opening higher up, like supra sphincteric and extra sphincteric, in that case, the, the other option is either you do a fistulotomy, open up the tract completely, then you have to repair the sphincter primarily. You have to repair the internal sphincter and external sphincter at that time only. Or you just excise the subcutaneous part of the tract and in the rest of the high tract, we put a setum. What is a setum? Setum actually basically it's a made up of any thread-like structure made of proline, silastic loop, uh, nylon, it is see. Setons can be used for two purposes. If there is large amount of anorectal sepsis which can't be drained on a single sitting, we put a seton in. We put a seton, that thread is introduced inside the tract of the fistula and leave it there. If there is multiple tract, you leave it multiple setons. This will help in draining, drainage of, of the sepsis. Okay, and the other setum we use is cutting setum. What we do, we excise the subcutaneous part of the fistula, then in the sphincteric part, you put a proline or nylon, a stainless steel wire, and tight it so that it cuts the sphincter. A little part of the sphincter is cut, and then it heals by fibrosis again. 
so that it's incontinence doesn't occur. Okay, a, a cutting sutton is tied tightly, and then a little bit of a sphincter, external sphincter will be cut, and over a period of two weeks or so, it will heal. Then you call the patient again. You can uh, again tighten it, or you can put another sutton. So this is a staged, uh, basically a sphincterotomy. This is done for higher fistula, which will lead to incontinence if divided uh, inappropriately. So, for the complex fistula, you can either have a, a complete fistulotomy with the primary repair of the sphincter, or you can do a set-on procedure. You can put a set-on in and tighten it regularly. Okay. Other procedures for complex fistula, the transesphinctric can be lift procedure, L-I-F-T ligation of intersphinctric fistulous tract. What we do for the external opening, we put a probe in, we give an incision at the intersphinctric groove, we, de we delineate the tract in between the sphincter, then you ligate the tract with 2-0 acryl and cut it. So now the tract is disconnected. Okay, so the external part or subcutaneous part you can excise, the internal opening is left, which you can cover by mucosal advancement fly. That is just above the you know, internal opening, you can make a flap of mucosa, submucosa, and bring it down to cover the internal opening. This is called mucosal advancement flap. Okay. In these days, you can also do it with a video assisted fistula treatment. There is a fistula scope which you can introduce and, and, and curate or destroy the epithelium. But again, you have to close the internal opening with a mucosal advancement flap. Other procedures can be a fibrin glue can be introduced inside the external opening and to the whole tract. And that's, that fibrin glue will act as a glue and hopefully seal the tract. Okay, so these are the various methods we use for <coughs> complex fistulae. Complex fistulae. Okay, thank you.